Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. Predictions vary as to the percent of jobs that will be lost to automation, offshoring, and gigging, but it's likely to be between 20 and 60 percent within the next decade or two. The consensus is that much of the remaining decent paying employment is going to demand ever more brain power, technical chops, and communication skills. And with so many applicants available, employers will be able to insist also on people who are likable, reliable, enthusiastic, and healthy. The big question is, what's going to happen to the many millions of people who don't get hired for those jobs? I fear that things will be different from previous technological waves, in which new technologies net created more new jobs. There will likely be a net job loss, in part because so much of the future economy will be based on digital products and services which can be produced by the millions with just a push of a button. This little talk describes what will likely be a problemed existence for the so-called bottom half and possible approaches to amelioration. The aforementioned millions will unfortunately likely have to flit from gig to gig that pay poorly. Or they may have a stable job, but only because it pays poorly and is work that most people don't find intrinsically rewarding. For example, janitorial, low-level construction, and landscape maintenance. Many formerly middle-class people will be vying even for such work. Indeed, many will work for nothing, whether out of altruism, wanting to be productive, or merely to while the time. And it's already starting to happen. For example, during my daily hike yesterday, I saw a passenger van with a sign, Volunteer Drivers Wanted. It's afraid, I'm afraid it's going to be a race to the bottom. What's going to be the result of all this? Well, demographics and college and media inflamed calls for more redistribution will likely result in a guaranteed basic income, free health care, free college, and even free basic food and shelter paid for by the shrinking tax base. But that's unlikely to be enough to maintain a workable society. If it's generous enough to please the recipients, it will eviscerate the middle class, which ends up paying most of the taxes, even if we taxed successful corporations and the one percenters at 90%. I'm envisioning 100 plus million Americans and billions worldwide who spend much of their life doing or looking for crap jobs. Many of the peaceable among them will escape with drugs. Marijuana legalization may be only the first step. With ever more underemployment, there will be pressure to legalize, for example, so-called magic mushrooms, LSD, cocaine, heroin, and ecstasy. Because drug abuse reduces inhibition and increases mental illness, that in turn will increase crime traffic accidents and the human toll on life and, um, and uh, broken arms and the like that accrue and thus contribute to the already overburdened healthcare system. More violent people, both those who are intrinsically inclined to violence as well as people who view violence as a good way to get more social, quote, social justice, that is redistribution, could, as in Zimbabwe, violently appropriate homes, land, and personal property from the haves that haven't sufficiently barricaded themselves behind heavily gated and armed homes. The most often proposed solution is better education. I don't buy it. My PhD from Berkeley specialized in the evaluation of education, so I've monitored the promise of education for decades. And so I believe pretty immutably that further improvement in education at a scalable level will yield only a modest difference in students' ability to do those well-paying, brain power, and technology-centric jobs. Another common recommendation is to have K-20 through education create more entrepreneurs because only entrepreneurs create jobs without eating the country's seed corn, that is, tax money. But I am not convinced that a more consumerist society ends up net better. Yes, we benefit from iPhones, big screen TVs, and easy buying on Amazon, but especially with ever fewer people being able to afford non-essentials, it may be wise to place our education bets on teaching people to care less about materialism and more about living simply, kindly, and to value recreational sports, 
video, and creative expression, music, art, writing, and so on. I'm agnostic on whether this whole thing would work because survival of the fittest, that is taking care of number one, may be powerful enough of a force to trump all the kumbaya lessons. A radical idea, which may never be feasible or that would be deemed unethical, is to increase funding to understand the biological basis of intelligence and of altruism. That could lead to genome surgeons, who already exist, for example, I just read about them on a UCSF newsletter. That could lead to genome surgeons replacing the gene cluster for low intelligence with one for high intelligence, the cluster for malevolence and even indifference with the cluster for altruism. I believe this would be ethical as long as, first, sufficient research was done in computer and animal models to carefully identify the gene editing's side effect profile and that that side effect profile is benign enough compared with genome editing's benefits. Also, before legalization, we must ensure that such surgery would be covered under the then extant healthcare system for the poor so it didn't exacerbate income inequality. And third, importantly, that participation in this would be particularly and purely voluntary. Of course, such long-term predictions as I've made here may well be wrong. We need to recall the study that found that monkeys predicted the stock market as well as did CNBC pundits. Recall also that a few decades ago, the experts said we'd be in flying cars now. Meanwhile, most of us are still pushing our hoovers rather than using a Roomba. But it at least feels better to plan for the future, even if flawed, than just to sit back and see what happens. So there you have my predictions and possible remediations. What do you think of them? You have any better ideas? Feel free to write them as comments. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm Marty Nemco.